Hello again. So I'm sitting on my front step and I've been thinking about what I might do in my next video. And the main reason I'm doing these videos is not so much for any of the three people out there who are watching this, but they're really for me to uh, give myself some focus to think about things and help me correct my own mistakes. And so, so by teaching my virtual students out there, I'm actually teaching myself. So I was thinking, well, what do I want to teach? And then I thought about, well, what's, what's the fundamental? What's the most important thing that if, if you get this wrong, nothing else will be right, no matter how hard you train? And the word that popped into my head was structure. And I thought, well, what is it in Five Ancestors that teaches us structure? And I thought about it and I thought about it and I realized, well, when we do our forms, we have this sequence, a very short sequence, at the start of almost all the hand forms in Five Ancestors, certainly in the, the Chi Kim Tok Tong school. Uh, Chi Kim Tong, for those of you who don't know, was uh, a great master of Five Ancestors, not just a, a practitioner, but he also fought in, uh, in wars using his bare hands, using blades, using firearms, I'm sure. But um, he's, he, he died um, 19 years ago. But in the late 20th century, he was one of the few living five ancestors masters who had actually used it as a martial art, as in he used it in war. So in the style of Wu Tzu Chen that he taught, there's this short sequence at the start of almost all of the hand forms. And it occurs to me that the reason that that's repeated, hammered in, hammered in, hammered in, is that it teaches you structure. So what do I mean by structure? Well, I mean it in a, in a very mechanical, uh, physical way. Uh, if a bridge has a bad structure, it will fall over. It will eventually succumb to the pressure of whatever traffic is going over it. If it's a bridge over a river, it might succumb to a heavy flood, high winds, and so on. Uh, a house, similarly. If the house has poor structure, it might shift over time. Anything. Anything mechanical, anything physical must have good structure, and that includes biological structures such as human beings. So it doesn't matter how fit you are, how hard you train, how much you spar, if your structure is wrong, everything else you do is affected. Think of a, an office chair with one wheel broken. Right? Every other part of the chair could be perfectly in shape, perfectly well constructed. But if that one wheel is broken, you can't sit on that chair. Now, don't think of structure in a rigid way, because your structure is constantly moving. A martial art is about movement, not about being fixed in a position. But you are constantly moving your structure, or rather you're moving from one structure to another constantly. And if you cannot start from a good structure and you cannot end up in a good structure, you can't block well, you can't punch well, you can't kick well, you can't take the impact of a blow well if your own structure is unstable. Posture. Don't stick your chin out. If you stick your chin out, you're throwing your, the weight at the, your top end forward, and your body will have to compensate for that, and usually it will do that by thrusting the hips forward. And you can see that, that, that this is just not stable. You can, you can see it. Don't lift the shoulders before the drop. Right? You just go from where you are. We'll see this in another point later. Right? Don't prepare, just go. Don't sway the shoulders when you move from left to right. 
Your shoulders must remain stable. You move what needs to move and nothing else. Now when you do this double fist lift, you've got to keep your arms straight. Right? This movement is about throwing somebody else off balance. You use that straight arm position to nudge their center of gravity off balance. And if you don't keep your arms straight, you can't learn to do that. Later, when you're more advanced, you can learn to do it with your arms bent. But starting out, you've got to do it with your arms straight. Okay, you've got to chamber fully, so you've got to pull the fists all the way back. Don't leave them dangling in front of your chest. You've got to bring your elbows as far back as you can and as close to each other as you can so that they're par the arms are parallel to each other. When you chamber the fists, you don't just pull them back into that position. There's also the, uh, a downward emphasis because this is actually the first block in the system that you learn, this downward smash. But it's very subtle. Right? Most people don't realize it's a block. But if you don't put any weight into it, you can't block anything with it. So when you step out into your horse stance, don't swing the leg. Step. It doesn't matter whether you do the basic step where you go heel and then turn the leg in or whether you just step out into your horse stance. But it's a step, not a leg swing. Don't step out too far into a ridiculously wide horse stance. Okay? Your horse stance is one of the few stances in Five Ancestors that's wider than your shoulders, but not much, not much. When you step out into your horse stance, keep your arse tucked in. If, you, if your arse sticks out like that, you will lose the structure and the stability. Don't grimace when you release force. Grimacing tells me that you're trying to look powerful instead of just being powerful. When you go to drop your hands into the double pressing block, don't drop your hands and lift them and then drop them again. Just go straight from your chambered position. When a pistol is cocked to fire, you don't uncock it then cock it again. You just squeeze the trigger. Don't generate force from the shoulder. As I've mentioned in previous videos, you generate force from your core. You bounce that force off your stable stance, but you don't throw it from the shoulder. Don't twist too much to one side because you'll easily uproot yourself. Keep your shoulders in line with each other, otherwise you won't have a straight spine. Same goes for the hips. You've got to keep them horizontal with each other. Don't swing your hands up into the double fist block as if you're raising a shield because this won't knock your opponent off balance even if you manage to stop their punch, which is actually not very likely. You've got to use those as strikes, really throw your opponent off balance. With the double open hand block, don't tense the hands. This block, you're blocking with the wrist, not the hand, and you use the fingers to sense your opponent. If your hands are tense, your fingers are not touching your opponent and you cannot sense. And with that same block, don't hold the elbows in too close to each other because you will lose control of that position. And with that block, don't overextend it either forwards or out to the side. An important aspect of Five Ancestors to remember is that it's partly based on the Taitsu system, which is also known as Emperor Boxing or Square Boxing. And the principle is that you keep everything inside an imaginary square, the uh, side of which is determined by roughly by the width of your shoulders. So if you imagine a square and everything you do is inside that square and if you need to m strike outside that square or maneuver outside that square you don't stretch outside the square because that disrupts your structure what you do is you move your square in other words you move yourself to where you need to be We pressure test our structure in a partner exercise called catching where someone more experienced 
exposes all of the flaws in your structure and exploits them. But we'll explore that in a future video. Thanks for watching.